Tonight, I went to auditions for Mousetrap. The Redlands Footlighters Theater. And I had asked about the history of the place. They've been in existence for 77 years. And in their location, I don't remember how many years. But they had a handful of people. They were renting a, uh, a theater in downtown Redlands, which is really cool little downtown. It is really cool. People in St. Louis, it's kind of like Webster Groves or Maplewood or something. It's just really cool. And... Uh, it's nice, and they the, the rent kept going up and up and up, so three or four or five of them pinched in together, pitched in together and bought a little piece of ground and built this building on it. And I said, well, if they built it, why is it not a regular stage or something? Why is it like this, with seats on both sides of a stage? The guy said, well, they built it that way because that's the way the old theater, what they were renting, was was like. So they wanted it to stay the same. Weird. It's very strange. I mean, I've done theater in the round before for a kid's show. And that's not easy. I mean, that's kind of hard. So, got to be on your toes for this. There was some uh, decent acting. And a lot of people can't have a, they don't have an English accent at all. <laughs> One guy looked like Adam Driver. He's pretty good too. I wouldn't be surprised if it were Adam Driver in disguise. <laughs> yeah, the it, it seemed pretty good. Here is uh, the inside of the place. This is the theater. It's like a black box theater, but it's split. There's that side as well. They're in the process of doing Moon Over Buffalo. There's the call board. <laughs> Where, oh, I guess there's the booze. This is where Ethel puts the uh, the booze in the coffee. We will actually, yeah, thank you very much. We're going to start from uh, the majors in. If it goes on like this, uh, we should have uh, five or six feet of snow by morning. It makes me remember when I was in the service back in 1940. I'll take these up. <coughs> Which room did you say? Blue room and, and the rose room? No, I put Mr. Wren in the rose room. He likes the full poster so much. So it's Mrs. Boyle's in the oak room and Major Metcalf in the blue room. Major. Those are auditions for Mousetrap. There are some tomorrow, which I will probably go back and, eh, you know, befriend some people maybe. I don't know. The Lady in the Purple was my direct competition for Mrs. Boyle's part. And the man who was reading a part in a burgundy shirt has some kind of vision problem. He had a bunch of things typed up really large and he had like a jeweler's eyeglass and he'd get right up to it. He was right up to it. Like two inches away from his face. Like five centis, five centis away from his face. Like, oh my god. I hope he doesn't drive. <laughs> I don't know. Holy cow. It went pretty well, and I like these people. They seem really nice. A lot of them probably have memorized it already or have done it before or whatever, and they know each other. I don't mind. If they accept me as part of the theater family, that'll be nice, and I can help out. I don't have to be in anything. This was something, because it's not a very large part, I've done it before, and I can do big and imposing assholes <laughs> and by the time it's presented in October I should have my teeth fixed by then I don't know and uh, it seemed really nice it seemed, seemed nice we shall see I suppose 
I wonder where the kitty is. I wonder where the kitty is. <laughs> Good boy. Well, today I watched Little Man. And Brian took Ashley into work because her car was being repaired. And then he left his work early so that he could pick her up and bring her to get her car and come home. And uh, it was what I kind of suspected. The caliper, brake caliper spring broke. And it wedged the... You have to... There's a tool you use when you're replacing disc brakes and it spreads the two discs apart because they're severely squished together. And the spring pulls them apart, but the spring broke. I kind of, I don't know what told me that that's what it was, but that's what my brain told me. Anyway, little man, he had oatmeal for breakfast and two blueberry pancakes. Now, he likes the taste of blueberry, but not the feeling of it. He doesn't like that, like, slimy little blueberry. He made a god-awful mess, and he kept saying, done, done. But I kept scraping it together and putting it back in his dish. I was like, no, you're not. <laughs> then the next meal, he had three meals. The next meal, a couple hours later, he had, uh, what was it? Oh, like a little tortilla with cheese I folded over and melted. Uh, I guess they call it a fajita. And then a little bowl of beans and spinach or something. He did not like that at all. He was feeling pretty crappy. He had milk earlier, and I think he must be lactose sensitive like me. He was just miserably miserable the rest of the afternoon. And then later I fed him. He had chicken, sweet potato, and what was the other thing? He liked that. He liked that a lot. He made a big mess with that too, but and then uh, that milk was hurting him. He was giving him pains in his stomach. He there was a, a few minutes where he screamed bloody murder, and I couldn't comfort him at all. And it really thought, oh crap! I'll bet you it's that milk he drank. He had bad gas. You know, like when you have really bad gas and you get these pains in your stomach and everything. I'm pretty sure that's what he had. Poor thing. And finally, by the time they got home, I walked around with him, holding him up tightly against me and rubbed his belly and rubbed his back. It seemed to help. But if we sat down, it bothered him. So I had to constantly hold him and walk back and forth. <laughs> Ashley caught me falling asleep, but he was in the cot. I put him in there to take a nap. He didn't want to take a nap. But he was awake, but entertaining himself, and apparently I fell asleep, and I hear, from the camera, I hear, Looks like Spencer is awake and Grandma's not. I'm like, oh, shit. I felt just terrible, like, oh, God. Well, at least he was in his little cot, his little playpen cot, and he couldn't go anywhere and get hurt. Thank God. But he had this terrible pain, and then he's... Toward the last hour that I was watching him, he had such gas. As much as an old person. <laughs> da 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 put 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 <laughs> Oh blah. Anyway. Mm. Yeah. He's a good kid. Tomorrow let's see. Tomorrow Brian works, Ashley is not. And then Brian's off. Starting Wednesday for two or three weeks. And next week they'll have been together 12 years. So he's going to take her out for a date night on Friday the 26th or whatever date that is. I was going to cook a nice meal for him, but Brian said they were going to have a date night. And I thought, oh, okay. Well, the offer still stands. Just let me know. <sighs> Spencer's birthday is coming up September 2nd. So all kinds of stuff's happening. I'm going to put this up now. It's almost midnight, so it'll be Tuesday by the time this is up. I am i didn't eat any supper because I didn't want to be gassy or anything at the auditions. Man, being old is a pain in the ass. <laughs> you get all this gas from where? I don't know. 
Look how, you know, you get up from a chair. What the hey? What the hey? <laughs> Any pressure? Kitty can't make it himself a nice little nest in the under the couch cover. Oh my god. Well, anyway. I might go back there tomorrow. They have auditions as well. And I said to someone, I said, do any other people show up on the second night of audition? She says, I don't know. You never know. They also have, at 6.15, they've got uh, learn how to audition or something. And then at 7 o'clock, the auditions start. I don't really want to be there till 10 o'clock like I was tonight. Oh, my God. Um, we got, we were handed the, uh, the uh, rehearsal schedule, and I don't have anything that conflicts with it that I know of, so in case we're cast. I don't know. I don't know how it plays. it's going to play out. There were a couple people that, in my mind, I knew who they should be. I knew who Mrs. Ralston should be, and I know who Miss Casewell should be. And the Adam Driver looking guy, he was good. He was really good. And there was another fellow of Indian descent. He was so cute. He had beautiful hair. A lot of Indian men have long, wavy hair and soft beard and everything. It, maybe it's just a certain sect or something. I don't know. But he had really beautiful hair. Let's see. There was the old guy that had to stand next to the paper to see it. And a fellow sitting next to him that memorized the whole play already. A woman that is vying for Mrs. Boyle's part who pretty much memorized the script too. I mean, I could have. I have it. But then there were three different young girls vying for the part of Molly. I know which one I would pick. And uh, Miss Casewell, I would, there's one I would in sp particular I would pick. She's funny. She's physically funny. Uh, Miss Casewell is supposed to be kind of a um, woman of the world. Don't know if she's a dyke or a man or a woman. You know, kind of androgynous, and she's been around. And she comes in. The in the the story is she comes in from the cold and stands in front of the fireplace to warm up. And this girl was pretending she was in front of the fireplace warming her butt and squatting and everything. Oh, she was funny. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. At least it was a nice evening out. And I've talked too long again. Wednesday. Uh, I have a joke in the can, basically. But I want to find a nice, long, dirty joke. It's about time we had a decent joke. Upward and onward.